Hi, everyone. So we are the prevention team on team two, and we're going to start off by quickly introducing ourselves. So I am Ria Umrani. I am class of 2024, and I go to Mason High School. Hi, everyone. I'm Lainey Gear. I'm going into my sophomore year, and I currently go to school at Northwest Career and Technical Academy. Hi, my name is Lauren Foxworth. I currently go to Brentwood, I'm, and I'm a freshman in high school. Hi, everyone. My name is Rashika Abishetti. I am a sophomore, and I go to Mount House High School. Hello, everyone. My name is Sumang, and I'm an upcoming sophomore, and I attend Del Norte High School in San Diego. Hey, everyone. My name is Maya Varani, and I'm class of 2026. I currently go to school at Campbell High School. Hi, everyone. My name is Sydney Hood. I'm a rising freshman, class of 2027, and I'm from Bay Area, San Francisco. When I was seven years old, I got a big red mosquito bite, straight slap on the knee. Um, young me went up to my mother and told her that it was itchy, that it was burning. She told me, put some cream on it, it'll go away, don't worry. However, a seven-year-old in Nigeria does not have the access to the resources and the luck that I did. Thus, there is a higher risk of contracting this disease called malaria, which is spread by the bite of a female Anopheli mosquito. It is a leading cause of death in states around Africa, one being Nigeria. Nigeria holds highest levels of malaria, more than the Democratic Republic of Congo, Tanzania, and other countries within Africa. According to UNICEF, in 2021, there were 247 million malaria cases globally that led to 619,000 deaths in total. Clearly, this statistic is scary. Nigeria lacks the resources needed, such as the funding and, and primary health care, and also education about the cause and ways to prevent it. So now I will hand it over to Ria to talk about personal prevention. So we have outlined three main ways of personal prevention, and that is going to be personal prevention, environmental, and community intervention. So for personal prevention, that is just using mosquito nets, covering yourself with clothes with long sleeves, and finally staying away from still water. Anything to make yourself more aware of your surroundings and be alert of the mosquitoes. Um, along with uh, personal prevention, environmental intervention is also important because um, enhancing infrastructure, access to resources, and government regulations can help reduce the occurrence of malaria. So increasing access to protective items is effective and can decrease the amount of people afflicted by malaria by using items such as mosquito nets, insecticide, mosquito repellent, and according to the CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, insecticide mosquito nets were shown to reduce the death of children under five years from all causes by 20%. Along with this, better access to doctors and increased medical guidance on how to deal with and prevent malaria can also reduce the occurrence of the disease in the future. Finally, suggestions by influential and trusted members of the community, like community leaders, to to propose warning signs around areas that have still water can warn the people of Bauchi that these are areas that have large amounts of mosquitoes and also have a high risk of getting malaria. Okay, so community-based interventions. So basically that we wanna use media by word of mouth and by like the coloring page that we made, which you'll see on the next slide to make it interactive and a fun way to remember um, like sorry, the prevention of malaria, like wearing long sleeves, mosquito nets. We wanna really emphasize how we can incorporate this, these preventions in their everyday lives without disrupting their religion or their culture and making sure that they're really confident and protected from these cases. In the eyes of people living in Bauchi State, we are seen as foreigners. Having trusted figures influence 
prevention methods can be very useful and they can start in incorporating prevention methods in their daily lives using these trusted figures. So as Lauren and Lainey just mentioned, community intervention is very important. So going off of that, we have created an interactive workshop which starts off with a candle making demo, which is essentially a type of homemade repellent. So this homemade repellent is going to be made um, as a DIY essential oil. So it will be citrus fruits like lemons, limes, and oranges, as well as herbs like rosemary and basil. We will infuse that with hot water and then put a candle into the glass of water and use that as a homemade repellent. Following that demonstration, we will also, and we will also be making the candle with them. So we will provide them with a candle wick and hot candle wax, and they will be able to make their own candle because as we mentioned before, we want to make this workshop very interactive and something culturally significant for them. Following the demonstration, we will have an activity for the children, which is similar to a coloring page or a maze, which we will display on the board in a minute. Um, the coloring page outlines various prevention methods for malaria, and the kids can work through it like a coloring page you see on a kid's meal page in a restaurant, and they can have about 10 minutes for that, and it's something that both the mothers and the children, which, is, which are our target audiences, can take home and implement into their daily lives. So we will flip to that page right now. Yeah. Um, and then we have to go back a slide. <laughs> back. Okay. So we have two main learning objectives that should come from our workshop. And one is obviously education, because as a couple groups mentioned before, education is the biggest step to prevention. People need to be educated in order to take those prevention steps and implement it into our lives. And the second objective was sustainability. So we really wanted something that all of the participants can not just hear and learn, but they can take home and practice. So it will actually make a bigger impact. So. As I mentioned before, our target audience is women and young children because these are the people most affected by malaria. And finally, we want to be very culturally and respect, we want to be aware and respectful of their values and we don't want to go in ignorant. So this was the slide. <laughs> this is a kind of a visual of what our homemade repellent is supposed to look like. It's the water is basically a homemade essential oil, and then the candle is the second part of the repellent. Now I would like to dive a little bit deeper into our homemade mosquito repellent. So first I will outline the significance and the ways to use. As Rhea stated, we will be using citrus and essential oils. These substances are known to not attract mosquitoes, and so families and women and children can place them outside the home to ward off any mosquitoes which come near. We believe that this is a effective idea because it is accessible to the people of Nigeria. Candles are not a foreign object. Therefore, they, it is easy for them to relate and adjust and shape their way of baking something that can help them ward off malaria. Lastly, we believe this is empowerment empowerment of the women and the mothers who are making these candles. They can take this cause into their own hands and save their children and even future generations because we would like to highlight the sustainability of our project. To the left, you guys can see the instruction page for this candle mosquito repellent. Not only can you use this instruction page at home at the workshop, but you can also use it at home. Community members are able to take this recipe home, which makes this candle sustainable and accessible. On this page, there's also a list of ingredients. And next to the ingredients, there are visual pictures. So it's not too hard to read and easy to understand. And to the right is our coloring sheet, which is the village mystery that will be talked about shortly. These are flyers that kids can take home and they can look back on the different prevention methods that they learned, which also goes into how we got this idea. 
we wanted to create something that they were able to look back on and remember the different prevention methods to help avoid malaria. And this flyer does just that. So our second workshop is called Village Mystery because the kids are supposed to walk around their village trying to find ways to prevent malaria because it is a mystery in the village. So this workshop will take around 10 minutes and once they receive, once, once each child receives a coloring sheet and some crayons, the facilitators will explain to them the motive of this project and then they will begin start coloring. And at start, you can see on the paper, at start, there'll be five mosquito drawings and then the number of mosquito drawings will gradually decrease as new prevention methods are found. Next to the image of the prevention methods, we also provided explanations on what the items are used for. So for example, if the prevention method is wearing long sleeve clothing, we will say that it will, on the paper, it will say that by doing so, the skin will be protected from getting mosquito bites. Additionally, there are many images on the coloring sheet for, that represent various ways that we can prevent malaria for visual and young learners. This workshop is extremely important because not only is not only is it fun and collaborative the kids can also become familiar with the ways on how to prevent malaria while this is also on a sustainable budget it's important for kids to learn and understand at a young age on how to protect themselves and continue to do so as they age Itemized budget. So as you know, our budget for the workshops is $500. And we managed to get under that budget by using $498.65, meaning we have a remainder of $1.35. And on our, what we used for everything, we used mason jars, candle wax, candle wicks, flyers for the maze and flyers for the candles with the instructions. Um, and we use crayons, oranges, limes, rosemary, and basil. So, so for our workshop, we created the, mos the, homemade mosquito, the homemade mosquito repellent and the coloring workshop, workshop themed the village mystery. So having created a sustainable budget and flyers, we hope that the kids will go home and apply their learning to their everyday lives. Incorporating these measures in the long run can reduce the number of infections and the number, they, the number of contractions they receive. Here is a page outlining our resources. Thank you for your time. Um, okay. Hi guys, that was a good job. Well, just looking at this page, my name isn't spelled well, but that's not thing I'm gonna take personal, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I liked your presentation. It was good. I wish you allowed yourself to speak more about what you know more than like concentrating on what you were reading at because I saw some people had some hitches when they were not reading their paper if you just said what you knew because I had talked to you guys so I know that you know everything here. For your for your first game, that's the village mystery. Firstly, I liked your story about when you were a child and your mother told you that was that 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 really captivated me to listen to your group. So that's really good. I like I always like whenever people have a personal touch. For the village mystery maze, I do like it. I always feel proud of, I guess this applies to everyone in general, how we first think about the workshop. And then I come and I'm like, oh, wow, they really brought it to life. Your candle looks so beautiful. If you make one, I want one. The picture was really beautiful. Um, for the maze, 
there's a bit of issue with long sleep clothing because again it's not something that kids would wear it's hot even here it was really hot outside and i was like i need to take off my lab coat i would have replaced it with things that kids do to see like you know instead of don't play near streams or a stagnant body of water because that's also a prevention way i would have allowed the mosquitoes to be following the kid up and down so that it shows that it's for children that you're protecting and Ahmed or Chalo, for example, might have a mosquito going around with him. Um, otherwise, you pretty did a good job. You should be very proud of yourself. You made it to Friday. You did really well. Congratulations. Super proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, prevention and community protection. Um, wonderful presentation. And you guys really prepared. Okay. Um, all the things you highlighted are implementable and doable. And um, all the malaria teams talked about staying away from still water. Yes, it's a good one. But um, most of the time, we encourage draining, getting rid of the still water. Because sometimes it's just maybe rainfall and then um, there's a puddle around your area or um, I don't know. Sometimes you just can't get away from the still water, not just ponds. And our still water is not from ponds, you know, the decorative ponds and all of that. It's usually as a result of bad hygienic practices. Our drainage systems are usually clogged with um, um, dirty nylons or inappropriate disposal of waste will go and block those drainages. So um, like I said, it's a good advice that people stay away, but let's try and encourage them to get rid of the still water. Because if you live close to a still water you can't move that easily okay but it's a good one your hard work really showed and um, I love the idea of sustainability okay where you talked about during your learning objectives you want it to sustain you don't want to do something for just two months three months five months one year and just let it go no you want sustainability. That is a very, very, very good idea. And like she said, it was a beautiful picture of the homemade repellent. I also want one if you happen to. Yes. And the idea of making a candle, it's like killing two birds with one stone. You know, you're empowering them and you're also teaching them how to protect themselves from um, mosquitoes. And um the village master again, I love the rationale behind it because um, from what I deduced from this game is that at every step of one's activity during the day, for example, a child in school uh, is playing or is getting educated, he should know about preventive me measures in school. If he's outside playing with his friends, he should also uh, know how to protect himself. If he's back home to his bed, okay, he should also know because it wouldn't make sense to prevent yourself from school and outside, but then you go home, there are thousands of mosquitoes in your room, okay? So I love the idea behind it, but like she said, that just uh, there could have been a better way to uh, put it out because I can see how the number of mosquitoes are reducing as one is taking every preventative measure. Very, very good. Okay. And I wasn't sure how much your budget was, the total. Four hundred. It wasn't written up there, but it's okay. Yeah. So uh, well done and congratulations. It really showed you guys worked really hard and you did your research perfectly well. Well done and congratulations for successfully completing this week. Thank you. I think uh, all have been said, um, just to say the idea of Kando is quite innovative and the use of what I will call appropriate technology because 
all the materials that will be used are locally sourced, locally available, and then you also empower communities. Oh, so that's excellent. Congratulations, team. Well done.